Went to a gun show this weekend and picked up a few things. I figured I'd show you what I got. Picked a couple of these up. I've never seen these before. They're uh, 12 gauge shotgun shells, but they're hard plastic. The guy says they're from the 70s, I guess. And they're stamped. I don't know if that's going to make out. There we go. Wanda. So, I haven't done any uh, research on them yet, but I uh, thought those were pretty cool. Definitely not going to shoot these. This one's the, uh, I guess you'd call it the cap piece. It's all it's got a crack in it, so just keep them. I thought they were kind of cool. Uh, what else I got? He also had picked up a box of uh, Remington Clean Bore Standard Velocity 22 Long Rifle. Those. And I got a box of Canuck 22 Long Rifle. Canadian Industries Limited, made in Montreal. Uh, but what's inside is actually 22 shorts. And they're kind of a mixed head stamp, but uh, the box is in good shape, so that's alright. Got that. So I got this box here, and it's CIL 22 Long Rifle again. And these are from. 1933, the property of the Department of Defense. And if you've never seen these before, they're copper cased. Not too bad a shape, they're a bit uh, oxidized, but uh, I don't plan on shooting them anyways. But I've never seen a box like that before, so I'll probably put it, uh, seal it up in some plastic so it doesn't. Any more damage to it? Just somebody put pencil marks on it, but uh, other than that, you know the label's all intact. The box is in pretty good shape for from 1933. So picked up that, especially uh, with the copper cases too. That's kind of cool. So I got two boxes of these. These are 22 WRFs. You know they're Canuck, made in Montreal, Canada again. CIL box in good shape, and if you've never seen them before, they're again a copper cased. They're 40, 45 grain bullet. Yeah, yeah, 45 grain bullet. So that's WRF. Now those are different from WMR, which is this here, which is the standard 22 magnum I'll take you off the tripod here to show you the difference this is a 40 grain lead bullet and this is no this is 45 grain this is 40 grain and if it'll come into focus there you can see the difference in length as far as I know you can shoot the WRFs in a uh, gun chamber for WMRs but obviously you can't go the other way around Not sure how long these lasted. I don't think they were super popular, but uh, you know, I figured what the hell. Grab a couple boxes. Maybe one day I'll come across one of those guns and be able to shoot it with the with some of these ammunition. All right, so that's that. This way. package deal on that. Then got another box of CIL. This is in 250 Savage. 100 grain bullets. I don't have a 250 Savage but the box is in nice shape. Uh, these two here no oh, wait here they were stuck in there. This is a couple. And these are 32 Winchester Specials. Uh, I believe the parent case is a 3030 Winchester, which I have yeah, right here. So, those are 32 Winchesters. And here is a, that's a 250 Savage. 
as a comparison. Well, there's a 30 odd six. And I can find my 308. And there's a 308. Bit of difference. So we got one of those. Let's leave those in there for now. And I also want to compare, a little, maybe a little better comparison with these 250 Savages is this here. This is the 243. There's a little comparison with those. Both the same diameter. But you see the neck's a little bit different, a lot more power capacity in there. This next box, I was kind of surprised to see it. You don't really, at least down around here, you don't really come across it. It's Winchester Super X Silver Tip, but it's chambered in the 300 H&H &H Magnum. Now, once again, I don't have a 300 H&H &H Magnum, but you never know. If you've never seen that, it's a belted Magnum. Like all the, it's got this long tapered neck on it. Kind of looks, reminds me of a, uh, a 22 Hornet giant sized. So that's that, and we got some comparisons. So here's the, here's the 308 again. You see the difference. And then we got, here's, Here's 300 Winchester Magnum, which I believe put that out to pasture. I don't think, as far as I know, there's nobody making a factory 300 H&H. I'm not sure. I just read an article. The guy had one custom made, but it could be wrong. But and that is what's left of a 300 Weatherby. The guy gave it to me as a split case, so I turned it into a key for the trigger locks. As you can see, a lot more powder capacity in the uh, the Weatherby, but then again, a lot more recoil too. So I got that, and here, just because everybody likes comparing it, there's the 300 H&H &H versus the 50 BMG. So I picked up a box of that. I didn't overpay for it, considering I don't know. A brand new box is probably quite a bit, but I didn't pay a ton of money for it, but I figured, oh, what the hell. Don't really see a lot of 300 H&H Magnums around here. The guy said he had one. He had a uh, Browning Safari grade in 375 H&H Magnum, but I want a, uh, I want to get a 375 H&H, but I want a pre-64 Winchester 70 Safari grade in the uh, 375 H&H. Plus he wanted two grand for the browning, so I figured I'd uh, passed on that. So I also picked up one of these here. This is a Cooey Model 39. Manufactured by Winchester in Ontario, Canada. Short, long, long rifle. And this is a single shot. And you have to manually cock it. But I checked it out. The bore is in really nice shape. Uh, the wood's not really figured that much, but that's usually how they are. They were, you know, uh, the working man's gun, but probably just redo it. There's no gouges, nothing, no big, huge scratches. The bluing, there's no pitting on the outside, but the bluing needs to be redone. Uh, the sights aren't in too bad a shape. The back sight's missing the adjuster, but I think I got an extra one. So yeah, the wood's not in too bad a shape. Blue needs to be redone on it. I'm not going to paint this or anything. Yeah, it's just one old swill sling and the front one's missing, but that's no big deal either. Get a shot of it.
So that's everything I picked up. Thank you everybody for watching and we'll see you on the flip side.